Hi guys, so today, as you can see, once again, we're back down at the air gun range at Ashcombe Air Gun Club. Obviously, we're on a HFT course once again, because it's a nice, bright part of the course, and it'll give you a good idea of sort of some general distances and what we're going to be doing today. And what we are going to be doing today is magnification. How much do you actually need? So obviously, if you're doing field target, most people will need 50 mag for finding the target focus. We'll come on to that in a minute, because I'll show you a quick example of that when we move on to the next scope up. But what we've got here, we've got the Vector Continental. It's a 2 to 15. So it's going to give you a rough idea of what the magnification is like and the field of view you're going to get. So what do you actually get to see out of the scope at them mags? Now, we're not going to do any shooting. We don't need to for this. It's just going to be a, a visual representation for you. So, rest on here. This target you can see in front of us at the moment. They're on two times magnification. It's about 12 yards away. See, as you can see, especially for ratting, this two times magnification is going to be brilliant. So you've got a really wide field of view. And obviously, through these rear add-on cameras, it doesn't quite give you the full representation of what you're going to get through the scope of field of view. But it's giving you an idea. So nice wide field of view. It's very easy to follow something going through the grass or going up the bank at the distance. The good thing about this as well, I'm set to 20 yards parallax at the moment, but you can see that more than clear enough to shoot. Obviously, the higher in magnification you go, the more fussy you've got to be on your magnification uh, on your parallax. Sorry. So it, where now we could leave it on 20 times, oh, sorry, 20 yards. We've got it on two times mag. I could shoot comfortably up to about five yards away, realistically. To see a rat coming through would be clear enough to see and as we go back moving out to sort of 40 45 yards it's still really nice and clear now you can see that red silhouette of the rat up there on the steel target obviously at two times mag that crosshair actually covers that 40 mil kill so that shows you a rough representation of how big that cross looks on that now does that mean you can't shoot a rabbit at 40 40 odd yards with two times mag well, to me, that quite simply answers, yes, you can quite easily shoot a rabbit or your quarry or vermin at that range using low mag. So you don't need to chase that magnification. However, moving on to the target point of view and for a target shooter, as you're coming up through with that, we'll use this as an example going back down to the 12 yard target. Now, we're going to increase the mag. That's down four times, so you've doubled it. The, dis the difference there is huge. Obviously coming up as well to that rat on the tree. Now what you're gonna find is with this, which obviously is quite a good example here, with losing the field of view, and once again, head being back here on this, it's very difficult to follow where you are. Now you can quite clearly see that dot takes up a lot less space on that um, rat silhouette now. Therefore, you can be slightly more accurate with your shot placement, just sacrificing a little bit of field of view. So we'll come back down to here again. And this time, we're going to increase it to 10 times. Obviously, now, as you can see, the parallax is an issue. So I now need to change the parallax to get that image clear. So, for example, we're shooting this 12 yards. Bring the parallax down. Nice, crystal clear image there. And very easy to shoot that distance. So, we'll move up to the 40 yard. Now, I don't know about you, but there's no way I'd be able to find that target clearly and shoot. It is around there. So I'm now going to do the parallax so you can actually see the difference that it makes as we come in. So you start seeing the outline, start seeing the target, come past it and come back, and there we go. Now we've got a nice clear image to shoot at. Obviously it is quite dark up there, once again, the magnification does make the scope darker. It doesn't matter what scope you've got, if you shoot that the particular scope on its lowest mag and then shoot on its highest mag you're going to lose that that slight clarity and also the brightness so obviously we've parallax that in up there when i can find it again here we go so we've got that there now we're going to just whack that right the way up to the full 15 times now you can see it's got darker again and that parallax is that little bit more fussy so we've got to do a little play with that again and then we've got a usable image now you might also notice how much the wobble is increased. It hasn't actually increased. We're wobbling the same amount, but it's what you can actually see through the scope has increased. Now, if I come back down, now we're on 15 mag to this really close target. There you go. It's a nice big 
circular splodge, and that's all you can see. We have a white splodge in the middle. Would you be happy shooting that? I don't think I would. So now you can see how much difference that makes when we parallax that in. It doesn't take up any space at all. So the dot is smaller than a 177 pallet mark on a piece of steel. So that shows you the difference between two to 15 mag. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Owl MV and we're gonna stick it on a Falcon X50. So we're gonna start nigh on where we left off on this on 10 mag with that. And then we're gonna move right the way up through to 50 times to show you the differences there. So we've got the Falcon X50 now, obviously slightly different platform with the Owl MV on the back. You can now see right the way around the outside of the scope. So it gives you a full representation of what this is like on 10 times magnification and how clear that is at that given distance, which now I've parallaxed it properly, is around about 13 yards. So moving up, bear in mind this is 10 mag, whereas before you could see a little bit clearer. Because this has got a 60 mil objective on it, that parallax really is necessary. So I can't see anywhere up there to see what we're looking at. I'm gonna to have to move that parallax right the way around so we've got a clear image and then I stand a chance of finding the target which is there we go so that shows you the 10 mag through the Falcon with that field of view once again this is now moving into a target scope territory so you're not going to have as wide a field of view as what you would through on the vector but you've got the reticle there for your holdover you're aiming off and that really nice crisp image what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to the long range target because obviously you've seen what Parallax does that way in regards to um, shooting close and far. Now, as you can see, that looks pretty clear now at that distance at that Parallax. So we're going to increase the mag from 10 to 20. Now it's already looking a little bit fuzzy. And that's because, the, as, as I go back to before, when you increase the magnification, the Parallax then becomes really, really crucial. So we'll just... bring that in again and tiny tiny little movements there are making it um, obviously making big differences now on my side wheel that was only the difference of about four yards on that so with this now we're going to increase the mag again as we go from 20 to 30 oh sorry just touch the camera now so now we're up on 30 uh, that rat is taking up a lot of the scope now so obviously if you were um, needing to hold off in a huge amount of wind, this is about the, dis the maximum mag that you're gonna really want to use. So you can see where your pellet placement is, aiming off like that, or aiming off the other side. You can still see the face plate and use the reticle for windage with that regard. Now, if you move the mag up further, which we're gonna do now, we're gonna go up to 40 now. We have to excuse the wobbles. As I say, it's not the easiest to hold. We're now on 40. Now you can see how much that wobble's now increased. Obviously while I'm talking, it's moving a huge amount. So we'll just clear that up again. As best as we can. But you can see that is nigh on impossible to hold stable while I'm talking to you. But it takes up the majority of the scope now now if you look i can't aim that far off now for wind before i end up losing the losing the target out of the side now for the final bit we're going to move right the way up to 50 times mag which is there obviously now you can really see how much wobble that is obviously that rat silhouette has gone from taking up or the kill zone's gone from taking up one dot on the two times mag on the vector to literally taking up about a, a fifth of the scope on here. It's, it's really, that is the difference. And if you look through, are you really gonna need to use this to shoot on for your general purpose? No, not at all. But if you're shooting bench rest or your field target shooting, you need to parallax. Now if bench rest, obviously looking at this, if I, I'm gonna go quiet for a minute while I put the crosshair over a pellet, just to show you how little that now takes up. I do apologize, that's about as, as still as I can possibly get it. Now obviously you can now see how little that reticle takes up. So it means you can be really, really accurate with your shot placement. Now I'm gonna 
just show you with the parallax now. So if, if I talk you through it, let's get that clear. So from here, we're showing 40 yards exactly with that. Now, if I turn that to 39 on this side wheel, that's how blurred it is. If I now turn it to 42, that's how blurred it is. So that's, that gives you a representation of what we're looking for in field target with high mag scopes. And you can literally walk back and forth and you can see it go clear, blurred, clear, blurred. And that's what helps us determine that range. Obviously, as I say, magnification wise now, this now gives you an idea of what you're actually going to get when you look through a low powered to high powered scope and the differences are and what you're looking for. So I hope that was informative for you. Obviously, if you've got any more questions, please feel free to drop us a call or drop us an email or comment on the video below. Thanks for watching.